day is going to be trash today. I'm about to call. It is what it is. And the game has started. Once again, this time Maryland versus JMU. Spear looking to lead the charge. Spoke too soon. Turner decided to call his own number. Takes out Pagella. Yep, taking out Pagella, number 99. First time that these two are playing against each other this season. And, ooh, okay, Connor with the kill, taking out Spear. Excellent kill by 73, Connor Angle. All right, good kill right there by Connor. Taking out one of the head captains. Takes out Captain Nick Spear for JMU. Yep. Ooh, but you know what, Kurt? Excellent catch. But Kurt just said very quickly, not so fast, my friend. Kurt. And Butts goes down as well on a James Turner throw. Yeah. That's a big loss. Demos and Butts going down. Yeah, man. All right, Andrew Schaefer leading the charge on the right. Throw not successful against oh, Poole. Dushak almost catches Schaefer as he was jogging back there. All right, the JMU guy with no name or jersey. Yep, and um, yeah, Nathan is allowed to do that. Oh, caught him sleeping. Kurt with the cross kill. Taking out head captain number 73, Connor. That's kind of that's a blow for the Terrapins. They just lost one of the more aggressive players. It is. I would say Maryland's three best players are now in the outline. 20 goes down. It's a tough way to start a point. Like I said, Maryland is comfortable with catching, but JMU is also very comfortable with throwing. So something got to give. Whew. Good block by Andrew protecting number 24, Schaefer. Kurt with the throw. Missed everything. Oh, did he step over? He did step over. Nate's calling him out. Andrew looking for the cross. Oh, he got him. Got my man sleeping. Dixon couldn't get it. Schaefer with the catch. The 2v1. Bits and combo meal from Popeye successful. Meant to say Popeye chicken sandwich was successful, but nevertheless, it sounded good at the time. Uh, Maryland's on the 10 count with four players left. Maryland has got a hope for a, a bad throw from JMU here to get a catch. All they need is one, but team throw on the left side. They're waiting for it. Spear put himself in a better position. Turner with the team throw, not successful. Like I said, JMU is pretty much just going to play aggressive right now. Oh, got him. Yep, good job. Washington goes down on that. Yeah, Schaefer with another kill on his, on his list. Someone may have just got clipped. Team throw successful, taking out number 15, pull. Two players left. God, Jesus. Too many bodies on the floor. My man might be concussed. Yeah, he took a headshot, and um, man's going to have to walk that off. One thing about Towson, I'm not saying that other schools don't do this because they do, uh, but Towson does not play when it comes to safety. Um, if it appears that you got a concussion, you're going to have a long conversation, and, and you, you're going to have to go through the channels. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't play with safety. Uh, I know that Terrapins, they don't play with safety. And um, Towson don't play with safety either. Hey, get to that, get to that. Granted, we all have signed a waiver. Well, some of us did, some of us didn't. But nevertheless, they don't. They don't want Looks anything like, on their hands. Looks like he had a quick talk with the athletic trainer, and I think she cleared him to play because they stopped talking. So I think so. He's just going to kind of just sit out for a moment. Team throw. Success. God, Jesus. And there's just, there's just not much a, a rookie can do in that situation. Nah, man. Nah, not really. He's facing... 
five on target throws. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, when you got that much heat coming your way, it's a tall task to even think about dodging, let alone catching. First point goes to James Madison. We got my man, um, All-American last year, Drew Funk, in the building. He's just kind of supporting his team. He actually works at College Park full time. Yeah, it looks like, um, you know, you're in the, you know, in that part of the region around College Park or nearby. You know, guys have a lot of great job opportunities. All righty. That being said, 16 minutes left in the first half, still plenty of time for both teams. We appreciate everyone watching today. You know, as we are successfully doing a 4K 60 frame per second tournament, it's going to be great for editing. We're going to get so many highlights off of this, man. All righty, and we're off. About to say the next project. Ooh, good kick. Oh, what, what? And a team catch. Woo! Spear saved his teammates. Almost twisted his ankle in the process, but. Heads up play by the JMU captain. That was smart. Just not giving up on that ball and just helping my man out. Paying big dividends. JMU is definitely prioritizing Maryland's top players this game. I mean. That is an early balls over wow. against Maryland. Wow. Wow. I mean, but I mean, but that's what you gotta do. I mean, like if you're going, you know, if you're you no, know, you're trying to win, you normally go after the top players first and then work your way down. Jamie, you done this guy to report. They they know. Connor. Currently on the bench, oh, well, it's number 18, number 24. Sheesh. And number nine, unfortunately, goes down that exchange as well. Continuing their strategy of taking out the top arms. Adam Butts goes down. Oh, yes. Oh, and a catch by the rookie. Good catch by the rookie. Taking out number 24, Schaefer. That That'll bring Angle back in. Yeah, man. Connor, I know he's happy to get back in, but he got to play. Oh, oh, a, double, a double by the rookie. He almost had it. Oh, man. And he, we have an injury. And he's definitely injured. We're going to have to stop the clock. Lord Jesus. And the athletic trainer is definitely going to talk to him a lot longer than my man from JMU. It looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, he's just, he's just a little bit more disappointed. He could not get the double catch. The first catch was successful, though. It will count. He was still trying to go for the second one. Like I said, if you're Maryland, this is what you got to do. Because you know that JMU is coming in with bad attentions, firing. And you just got to have the confidence. Yeah, JMU is going to give you a catchable ball. It'll be very fast, and there's probably going to be more than one at a time. But it's catchable. Yeah, it is catchable. You just got to find a way to slow your brain down fast enough to not overreact and just kind of see it for what it is. Team throw most likely come from the left-hand side. Nope, spoke too soon. And that catch did bring Adam Butts back in for Maryland. Oh, what a oh, snap! What a catch. By number 16, Floss. I believe he's a rookie. I was watching him in their earlier game against Towson. He has incredible catching hands. Yes, he does. Sheesh. Well, you know, dodgeball is an equal opportunist game. Doesn't matter, man, woman, child, or beast. Anybody can get it. Unfortunately, she goes down on that exchange. Team throw may be coming from the left. Successful. The Turner Spear combo on the left hand side is, da is dangerous for the Dukes. Good, 
good reset draw by Kurt. JMU taking advantage of that close wall behind the Terps. That they are, man. That they are. Dang, Connor. Angle goes down. Yikes. A well executed team throw. Yeah. He kind of just guessed wrong in that situation. Just like that. Maryland's back on the 10 count. Woo, oh, got him. Hit? Yes, it was. Good shot by Jacob Poole. Much needed. Yeah, he was a sniper. He even caught me by surprise. A catch is all that Maryland needs right now to help their cause. They just need a catch. Obviously, they do have to reset, but they're on the 10 count, and they have more than two balls. Ooh, that was close. You got to pay attention because James Turner is coming for headshots. JT almost caught Adam sleeping there. Yes, he did. Beautiful position for Dixon. But number seven does not have a ball. They might be. Spear goes down by the throw by Butts. Wow. From the middle position, too, which is not easy to do. Got to have like a full 180 range of, of vision. It's not easy, but when you got that kind of lightning in your arm, you can make some plays. Got another kill. Kirk goes down. Team throw, not successful. 31 still in. And like I said, Maryland don't have to do anything crazy. They just got to stay alive and just wait for a catch. Or just wait for Adam to pick everybody off one by one. That works too. Because he got enough, he got enough of, a, of a quick release that he can get the kill. And he got the power to make sure that they're not going to catch him. So it works for him. Ah, oh, damn, pool. God. He goes down. Four players left for Maryland. Let's see, Daisy might be looking for something. JT with the throw, not successful against Adam. Daisy is looking for a counter throw. As soon as a player throw, he's trying to look if they're not paying attention, try to get across. All eyes on Adam Way right now. The team for Got him. Butts. Number 31 goes down that exchange. Three players left for Maryland. James Turner. With a unique throw. Good reset throw by Adam. Uh-oh. Now she's in the middle. That's not a good position for her. Jasmine is a rookie, but she has she's a very strong catcher. I believe you. Far from helpless out there. I believe you. I'm just saying the middle position is not the ideal position. Especially with JMU firing team throw after team throw at Adam that's, on the corner. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm not down her catching abilities. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that she might want to be in a different position. The middle is the toughest position to make catches. Because you got to use both eyes simultaneously and be aware. Oh, and Butts goes down. Tried to make the difficult catch on JT. Couldn't quite haul it in. Yeah, so if I'm Jasmine, I will probably... Oh, crap, Bassett. And it's up to her. Sheesh. Oh, boy. Now it's just Jasmine versus the whole JMU team. Yeah. And she's caught. Okay. I'm just saying, it could have been a lot worse. Certainly could have. Uh, yeah, we do have time. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I wasn't down to her catching abilities. I'm just saying, when you're wearing glasses like me, you know how much a prescription costs, especially if you don't have insurance. Please get insurance. Please. Sooner rather than later. Okay. A good, I mean, like a good prescription for glasses is going to cost you north of $200. And if you're like me, who also want to play sports and want to get some sports goggles, you're going to be shelling out an additional 150 at the minimum. Yeah, dodgeball is certainly not a glasses-friendly sport. No, it's not. 
No, it is not. No, that's this one. Yeah, that's all I was saying right there, man. But yeah, in those kind of situations, like obviously. Yeah, you just gotta gotta get small and hope that one of the throws misses and finds you right in the stomach. Basically, and kind of like go towards like a corner, corner, especially when you have, you know, probably less than like eight players, and you kind of like playing defensively. But like I said, you know, she she'll learn, she'll learn, she'll get better. Yep, this is her first tournament. Yeah. Well, second, actually. She played in the inaugural uh, women's tournament up in Ohio last weekend. Oh, nice, nice. That was definitely a good trip for them. Yep, Maryland was the only East Coast team to send a, a women's team up there this past weekend. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. Both sides, get set. Right, JMU is taking a strong 2-0 to zero lead here just halfway through the first. Yeah, and it seems like they're not slowing down either. Schaefer and Andrew currently on the bench right now. We have all the teams from the East Coast in attendance, with the exception of Penn State and VCU. Another strong kill by JMU. Originally, Penn State was trying to host a tournament yesterday. For some odd reason, that didn't quite happen. As a result, they wasn't able to show up today because it's um, it's family day. Good Lord, Paul, you good? Yeah, he's good. Just kind of took a tumble. Um, I think that was more on the trip than on the throw. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. But yeah, but, but but because Penn State's having family day, um, they didn't feel enough people. So most likely, their next tournament. It's probably going to be November the 5th, not confirmed yet, or they're going to be heading towards Akron, either one. They want to play some more teams from the Ohio and Michigan region. And um, they kind of let their requests be known. And, uh, and I believe that Maryland is also going to be traveling out to Akron, not this semester, but next semester for the legendary war tournament. That is correct. Maryland is trying to make it out to war in Akron uh, this coming spring. Yeah, so for those of you who keep on saying, hey, why doesn't Maryland travel, da-da-da, da-da-da, Maryland has a travel restriction. What I mean by that is if it's more than, I believe, ooh, what a great catch. Oh, what a catch by JMU. That's number 16 again. Ooh, good catch oh. by Adam. And butts right back on it. Wow. JT got a little too risky with that backhand. Like I said before, Maryland can catch. They are a catching team, and they pride themselves in catching. And they're not intimidated. But yeah, but like I was saying before, and Zach, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Maryland has a restriction that if it's more than 300 miles, they kind of got to get special permission from the school to travel. That's absolutely correct, and they don't tend to get that special permission more than once a year, so they try to save that trip for nationals. Um, but luckily, Akron's just inside that 300-mile mark, so they can make it out there. Yeah, and that's going to be much needed because the war tournament have historically have teams from all region, East Coast, Ohio region, Michigan, you know, even, you know, the new central region, which is a combination of the Midway Conference and the South Conference, Midway, UWP, Nebraska, you know, South, you know, Kentucky, you know, and the two Georgia schools, University of North Georgia and Georgia Southern University. But they have created a new region called the Central Region. Don't be surprised they'll be out for that as well. Woo! Yeah, and the rookie Pawlowski goes down there on the miss block. Yeah. It's tough, just a lapse of focus. Yeah, Maryland's definitely playing with a lot more confidence now. They, they kind of found a groove, and it kind of shows. They kind of drilled up some of the numbers down from JMU, but they're still pretty aggressive on the front end. 
Ooh, team throw. A narrow miss on that cross by Butts. Yeah. Uh-oh. Cross. Yeah, Kurt wanted that kill. And, oh, oh, he almost reached. 16 almost found himself over the line there. Yeah, he did. His foot was on the line. Didn't cross, but it was on the line. And speaking of which, players got to be very careful. Oh, and there's a catch. Angle goes down. Justin Ball with the catch from his knees. Like I said, he's one of those players. He's very comfortable catching as well as number eight, Patrick. And um, I also want to say number 16 as well. Ooh, Spears. Oh, what a throw. Took a Nate Walls, takes Nick Spears' head clean off his shoulders. Yeah, we caught that in 4K too. So, he, you know, Nate definitely want that highlight. Uh oh. Yeah, that was. Woo! Kurt with the kill, taking out Nate from that exchange. And that is most likely going to put Maryland on the 10 count after they throw this ball. They got 15 seconds to throw this one. Okay, now they're on 10. Ooh. Oh, a drop catch by Adam Butts. Dang, you hate to see it. Woo! Woo, put your head on a swivel. And it looks like there's a ball. Wait. Oh, timeout? Is that a timeout by Maryland, I believe? All right. Good call right there by head coach Daniel. Giving his player some ammunition. Like I said, JMU would have just continued to be just firing. Approximately four. Four and a half. Yeah, roughly four minutes and 34 seconds left. And this point. If a point is score, four minutes or under, that time would be roll over to the second half. We're doing two 20-minute halves for time purposes. We got six games today. I'm pretty sure we're on game number three. Uh, this is four. This is four. Okay, I'm doing my – oh, right, because uh, – I, yeah, we're on the fourth game. Oh, yikes, he reached. He reached. Yeah, we're on game number four. You're right. I forgot because we wasn't able to get the first game on the stream because we got into the jump kind of late. Ooh, that clipped oh, him. Good hit by Demo. Yeah, that clipped him. Little over the shoulder throw. Yeah. We're we're on um gym one at Towson. This is kinda like the old gym. Gosh, he's Oh, Cecilia goes down. Yeah, she's gonna have to wear that one. She's not happy about that. Okay, that's just disrespectful. You could at least drop the purple ball first. I was not needed, sir. Apparently, Jason Ball, number 65, does not care about my personal feelings. Demos is going to have to make some plays here real quick if Maryland has any chance at this point. Yeah. And it looks like JMU is going for headshots now. Now he should eat. I think they've only been going for headshots the whole game. That's JMU's move. I mean, you're not. They want the highlights. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm just saying this is more of an incentive. Now. But you're not wrong, though. Soft changeup by number 11, not successful. That ball would not count. That's not going to count. But that. Oh, Demos almost had him on the foot there. He almost did. Strong. Uh oh, yikes. Uh oh, oh, God. Woo. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. And Demos goes down on the chest pass. That could have been way worse than what it actually was. Demos could have caught that. He would have had an easy another probably two or three more kills. Uh, drop catch by Kurt. Woo! Oh, and a catch by Zessis. And Poole is now in the game, and he's running earnestly. Poole is fired up. Yes, he is. That is huge. Poole is one of Maryland's better throwers. All right, look like they've seen enough. Woo! Oh! Oh! Zessis is on fire. The dirty troops are coming through, baby. 
All right, looks like another timeout call, this time by JMU. Wow. Two minutes. Well, two minutes. Don't look, don't look now, y'all, but the Terps are coming back with some much needed catch. I've been trying to tell y'all, man, Maryland is very comfortable with catching. Franklin Zess is putting the team on his back. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. JMU looking kind of confused right now. I would be, too. That's a rookie at his second tournament, and he just caught two of your better throwers back-to-back. -back. Yeah. It's not something you see very often. No, nah, but like I said. And that second catch was especially huge. You brought back in Caleb Dixon. Which? Is probably the best catcher on this Maryland team. Yeah, and probably one of the more shiftier players on this team as well. Make himself an extremely small target, making it virtually impossible to hit sometimes, even if you're doing team throws against him. Especially if he's got a ball and he's uh, crouched there on the back line, he's, he's impossible to hit. Yeah, and as a result, JMU went, from having, JMU went from having absolute man advantage and ball advantage to now they're on a tank cow. And as a result, Schaefer just came off the bench into this game. 65 ball is in this game, and 16 is in this game as well. Um, Schaefer is the only person that's coming off the bench. Here comes the throw by Schaefer. Even if Maryland does not get this point, this Good reset by Poole. the score would still be 2-0. to zero. And this would be a win for Maryland because they will not be down by three. Absolutely. This, this point not counting as a win for either side is definitely a win for Maryland. Yeah, big, big confident booster. I think they were down six to one in man advantage at one point. Oh, he dropped the ball. Uh, and the hero, Zessis, goes down. All right, 3v2 situation. JMU with the man advantage, but by one player. A catch would change everything. Caleb with the throw. Solid throw. It will count. Dixon is begging Jam you to throw at him. He is, man, because he don't care. One minute left. Oh! One minute, one minute, one minute. Poole was able to successfully move out the way. If either team wants to win this point, they're going to have to speed up the pace. Yeah. Team throw. Not successful. Uh-oh. Pause it. Well, okay, Andrew. We're going to pause it. We know. Come on, Al. Jeez, that is a balls over for JMU, or is that a timeout? I don't know because it looked like JMU got their balls. So, yeah, so we're under 50 seconds. Yes, the clock you see on the screen is the official game clock for this game. 42. 42. 42. Yeah. All right, both sides ready. Ryan, Ryan, give me more. Yeah, you're ready. Yeah, you're ready. Okay, you know what? James is going to be leading the They're charge. Pushing hard for pool. They won't close this point. Yeah. Oh, he could not oh, get Schaefer it. Schaefer goes down. You could not get it. And that's going to change in quite a bit because Dixon knows that the other. has just one ball. Dixon knows that Schaefer was his strongest arm left. And with him going down, that gives Dixon the ability to play a little bit more freely. Just 13 seconds left in the game or in the half. Team throw. He's going. Oh, here it comes. Uh, he's waiting. There it is. Ah! No. Did it get him? It got him. Half, half. Dirty Terps are ready for the NCAA this season, so watch out. As we're making our way to College Park, we got to go to the Interstate 495, making our way downtown, walking fast. You know what? I'm not going to sing the rest of that. Let's get back down to business. So they practice here at the Coliseum. But let's pay tribute to our graduating seniors. Number six, Alex. Number 29, Bryce. Number 24, Michael Chu. And head captain and now new head coach, number 33, Daniel. Now last season, you know, Maryland only had four players coming back from the 2020 season. They now have a full roster once again. 
look for them to be timely catching, really good, really good defensive moves and whatnot, and playing overall great team ball. Okay, this is definitely their strengths. They play at a much slower pace than their opponents, but that's okay. It works extremely well for them, and they really pride themselves on their teamwork. Connor got some big shoes to fill as a head captain of Maryland. Really gonna have to put the team on his back, both offensively and defensively, as well as motivating the Terrapins as they push their way from the bottom of the league towards the upper echelon of the NCAA. As long as it doesn't get too loud, too crazy. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, having that crowd, Mike is good. You know, you kind of hear the, you know, the axe in the balls of Ricochet. Sometimes, though, people do get a little bit too crazy, though, and then it gets difficult for my man, Zach, and I to hear each other. So, probably have to fix that, too, in post. Yo, hey, Drew, what are you doing? My boy. Drew, what are you doing? You can't be Drew. Drew thinks he's going to get in the game. Unfortunately, Drew graduated, so. Drew, you can't be playing, my guy. We got you in 4K, my dude. <laughs> like, dude, we, we don't have 720 anymore. We don't have 10A. We got 4K. You, I mean, if, if we're having alumni play, I, I got my sneakers on. I'll hop in. We'll have a game. If, if, we're, if we're doing that, yes. But if we're not, especially since we got this in 4K, we don't want JMU to be in a situation where they just forfeit it just because Drew just want to have some fun. That's not a good look. That'd be a terrible look. Oh, and I, I just, Caleb, I, Caleb Dixon with the strong I, I catch just, on Schaefer I on the just, first throw of the half. I just half. said Dixon is one of the more shiftier players on Maryland. And my man Zach has been praising him, saying that he is the best catcher from Maryland. Why would you do a single throw on my man? There's just no reason to ever throw at that man with less than three balls. That's what I'm saying. It's just not worth it. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you read the scouting report. Schaefer appears to be casting a spell on Demos. That is against the rules. It kind of is, but... No spell casting allowed from the sideline. No, not at all. But anywho, um, I'm not 100% sure how much time this passed. Oh, crap, Bex. Yellow goes down, didn't see the cross. I want to say like probably like a minute or two may have passed thus far. I might be wrong. In the half? No, just thus far in this, um, in this particular point. Yeah, in the half. It's been a minute and 15 seconds. A minute and 15, okay. Oh, oh there's a catch by Nate Walls. I've been saying this all day, y'all. Maryland is extremely comfortable. At, unfortunately, Adam goes down that chain. Maryland is extremely comfortable catching from the back line. That's one of the more difficult things to do in the league because a lot of teams don't like playing on the back line. There's a trade for both players. 16 goes down. Um, false. Pool goes down. Number 15 for Maryland. Oh, good job by Maryland getting both of those balls back. On their side, yes, oh, he what can! what a catch by Demo. Yes, he What? The catching out, is that what's being called here? Okay, I'm about to say the catch should count at least because I caught that at 4K. Oh, oh, it looks like Demos was caught before he made his catch. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I'm still clipping that as a highlight, though. I don't care. It was still a great catch, even if it didn't count. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm clipping that. I don't care. You, you do a very difficult catch like that in a very difficult position, yeah, you earn my respect, sir. Say less. I got you, fam. I got you. But like I said, Mar oh! oh! And it seems like Justin Ball is still being disrespectful, not wanting to drop his ball. I don't, I don't know that that one was on purpose. I don't think it was. I think that, that throw just rose on him a bit, I, caught him under the chin. I think, yeah, pretty much. But like I said, he done that twice. Oh, good job by Connor taking out number 10, JT, also known as James Turner. 
And like I said, Maryland has been doing all this from the back line. Not the front line, not the transition game, from the back line. Which is not an easy thing to do because a lot of teams in the league hate playing from the back line. Oh my oh. God, he just wore it. Like, he just, yikes. Lily got my man turn on a swivel. Yikes. I know, Jamie, you want that clip. And unfortunately, I most likely will give it to them because they will give me food. It's okay. Franklin Zess has got his highlight in the last point. He got his two catches. Yes, he did. He did his job. Team draw on the left side. Going out to Connor. Could not get him. And, oh, and he stepped over. Number one. Number one, um, Dixie, step over. And JMU is really close to a 10 count. They lose a couple more players. They're going to be in that situation. Dixon is pushing aggressively. As he should. As he should. Let's see if Schaefer learned his lesson to not throw. Oh, man. Is that a catch by Butts? Okay, no. I was going to say, I don't think that was a catch. I don't Adam. think so either. Unfortunately, two Maryland players, Adam. And Connor goes down that exchange, which now unfortunately put Maryland on the 10 count. Team throw, successful. Taking out number 25 for Maryland. Four players left to beat. Dixon to our far right. Number two, Dushak, probably the best thrower remaining for Maryland. Right, playing the middle position. We got the rookie 99 to our far left. And then we also have number 18 to the right of Caleb Dixon. Oh, oh. man, he almost had it. He read it. It was just, just that delay. Just a little too much gas on that. for Just too much. Oh, man. Somehow. And he gets over that. Yes, he did. And successfully kills number zero, Kurt, from that exchange. Team throw might be coming up. Never mind. It's a little too soon. All right. They're going to try to go after Caleb. Oh, oh good oh. cross by Dushak. Beautiful. Taking out number 65, Justin Ball. Uh-oh. Seems like we got an injured player. And I don't think Miller has any more timeouts. They cannot call a timeout to replace him. It looks like he may have just turned his ankle. And knowing JMU, they do not care about people's feelings, injured or not. He understands that he's in a bad situation. He cannot put any weight, and he has to literally step off the court. Yeah, no, I don't think he realized that Maryland doesn't have to waste a timeout if he's injured. Yeah, injury timeout by the refs. Like I said, looks like an ankle injury. Yeah, no, we can just get a sub in there for him. They don't, he doesn't have to stay in there in pain. No, nah, he doesn't. Like I said, I have numerous ankle injuries, both the left and the right. It's one of the reasons why I don't play anymore. I would like to walk without screaming in pain every 10 steps. All right, so it looks like the injured Jared Weisherding is out, and Adam Rodriguez is in to replace him. Hey, that's, hey that'll work. That'll work. JMU has approximately five players left. So they're on a tank count as well. But most likely see JMU be, you know, do what they normally do, try to go after their opponents. And probably look for Maryland to try to find an opening. If they see a gap, a little seam, a little opening, do not be surprised. Most likely number two, try to go across or try to get a kill from the transition game for Maryland. Do not be surprised. He was looking for it, not successful. All right, so let's see if they're going to do this team throw against. Or no team throw. All right. It's a risky throw by Dushak. It is. a catchable ball. It is. Any ball that kind of stays in the air longer than like two seconds is risky. Woo! He's looking for a catch. He was looking for the catch. He was almost in position. 
Looks like Jamie is going to do a team throw. Good try. And it's a ground. He's safe. Oh, he's not safe. He is not safe. Schaefer took him out. And 31 goes down. One play left to beat. All right, it's just Caleb Dixon left. Oh! oh, and the catch just slips through his hands. And it seems like Schaefer has learned his lesson and was able to get the kill. And that's going to make it a 3-1, 3-1 game. Oh, Schaefer, what are you doing? 3-0 game. Yeah, it's a 3-0 game. Schaefer, what are you doing? You don't, you don't need to talk. I didn't hit start. <laughs> 13 minutes. 13 minutes, you're fine. All right. Any seconds on top of that? Nope, 13 even. 13 even, huh? Interesting. Uh, you gotta remind me, you gotta okay. Remind me. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I, I know. <sighs> I wonder. Okay, so from a stream. Uh oh. Uh oh. See anybody we're going to slow. Uh oh. <sighs> Looks like our 4K journey is coming to an end, ladies and gentlemen. It seems to be lagging. <clears throat> One minute. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. The internet was uh, getting slow on us, so we had to switch the quality up. We come back to just a furious exchange. Multiple players on each team going down. Yeah, they are. It's getting pretty toxic. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not toxic. It's just getting interesting now. That started a new stream. Looked like 4K worked for a little bit. Obviously, the higher the revolution, the higher the frame rates, the more band rips it requires. For anyone who's a nerd like me, you know that's going to require a lot of bandwidth, a lot of energy. We were successful before, but it seems like as more people coming in, that's kind of becoming more of an interference. So we're back to a normal 10K video. Oh, good shot by Schaefer, taking out number 11, Nathan Wells. Walls, my apologies. But regardless, though, we still got great 40 stuff. So that was fun. Sheesh. Schaefer seems to still be upset that Dixon <laughs> caught him last point. <laughs> Yo. He took it personally. It yeah, looks he, like. he's taking it personally now. It's a personal endeavor. Sheesh. Oh. oh. Bro, you can't throw at number 16. That's just the wrong man to throw at. Yeah, you can't. Like, he's not the one. Like, uh, that's a problem. You got to stop doing that. I know you're eager, but go after somebody else. Anybody else. Anybody else. Whoever it is, they're not as good at catching as he is. Oh! Oh, Angle can't quite haul in the catch there. And just like that, Mela is back on the 10 count once again. 
And I don't think that's going to count. That will, and unfortunately he reads and he's out. Oh, JT with the kill. Pool goes down. Yep. Maryland's down to just three players. Yeah, this game got kind of off wheel, quick and fast in a hurry, man. Sheesh. No, not nah, Nate saying that he's safe. They have some good catchers left in Maryland does, but unfortunately none of their top flight arms are still on the court. Correct. And that's, and that's kind of just been a problem with Maryland. Like I said, being a deep, oh, oh, geez. Yeah, Shave is definitely taking things personally now. Couldn't quite haul it in. All right. She's Jasmine. And Franklin Zessis. Pretty sure both of them are rookies. They are both rookies. It's a good throw. Keep it out of 16's reach. And wow! And Jasmine with the catch. Unbelievable. This is her first tournament ever, second game ever. And she caught out JT. Not an easy person to take out either. And I don't think he went easy on her either. Pretty sure. I don't think that was a changeup. That looked like a full speed one to me. No, he went after her with bad intentions. And that brings back in Adam Butts. Best thrower on this team. Good attempt. I'm about to say the next project I'm going to do is trying to really lock in this 4K 60 frame per second if possible. If not, 2K also works just as well. It's still a gray above. Oh, and Schaefer goes down. Dang. Got caught reaching on that catch. He really did, man. He's not happy with himself. But yeah, but even by 2K, it's still a step above 10K, which is fine. It's totally fine. And then somehow, and I'm going to need some manpower for this. And oh, Franklin takes out 16. Wow, Floss really finally went down. Uh, but yeah, next project, go above 1080. And ball goes down that exchange. That's JMU's two of their best catchers remaining. Yes. Um, but yeah, go above 10, go above 1080, 60 frames per second, and then start getting back to multi cameras and start doing instant replay. That's going to be the next project. That's a hit for Adam Butts. Great kill by Adam. Great kill. And like I said, this is the same thing that happened last time when it was like at the bottom of the half. It is. JMU has really struggled today closing out these points. They get out to an early lead pretty easy and then struggle to take out the last three or four people. Yeah, and all of this started because Jasmine was able to get that much needed catch against James Turner. That should count. Adam with the long reset. Like I said, Maryland's playing extremely well. They are, and JMU, as many throwers as they have, I don't think they have any of their best throwers on the court right now. No. Number eight's a phenomenal catcher. Oh, oh no. no! That's... And Adam Butts gets caught reaching in transition and goes down. Oh, man. Just two rookies left. This is a tough situation. Uh-oh, they're going after him. Oh, oh, he dropped it! It's just her. Will they go easy on her? I think not. They don't have a choice. Well... Ah, uh, by the foot. That's that a good throw. That will quickly end Close that point. point. Yeah. Quickly earned that. Quickly change that point. All right, cool. Nate, did you say keep it running? Well. If JMU just scored their four point, it's now a running clock. Yeah, running clock. Okay. So, yeah, so now we're just doing running clock throughout the game. In the second half, if a team is up four to zero, running clock could be installed. Huh. <sighs> 
JMU does seem to have a pretty significantly different team from the uh, Maryland home tournament a couple weeks ago. I know that uh, Nick Spear is now healthy and James Turner is also at this tournament. They still do not have uh, Evan Eschenberg here, the reigning MVP. So this team looks solid and is still not at full strength. Yeah. As I was talking to Evan Eschenberg at the last tournament, you know, he pretty much said, like, hey, you know, I've been in the league for a long time, um, been competing for a long time, and I don't really want to continue to be that guy, you know, that got to throw every single throw. Someone else needs to do this. So, you know, Drew Funk and um, Evan Essenberg, you know, last year, they've kind of been implementing this new – offense for JMU, which will kind of allow them to be more, you know, more strategic. More and, balanced. Yeah, and more balanced. Um, you know, both offensively and defensively while, you know, sprinkling, you know, the transition game, at least from off the rush and off the counters. And so, also not requiring their top throwers to throw dozens of times every game. Correct. That's kind of protecting the arms and the safety of their players while also efficiently working on the skill sets that they haven't really want to, they haven't really worked on in a long time. So it, it's kind of weird just seeing it, you know? I mean, I don't know. I'm old, I guess. <laughs> you know, I've seen JMU for a long time. It's just different. But change is good. You know, change is good. And I think it's going to help them long term. Um, not just with this year, but also moving forward. But yeah, I know regardless of the score, I, I still want to say I'm really impressed by Maryland. Last time these two teams played against each other, it was at James Madison back in February, and the score was 10-0, to zero, either 8-0 to zero or 10-0 to zero in favor of JMU. I think it was eight, and that was also a much different uh, Maryland team than you see right here. That's true. That was um, I know I know Adam didn't make that trip. I don't believe Zach Demos made that trip. So two major leaders of this team uh, that weren't at that tournament. Right, and also keep in mind, too, Maryland, Jesus, 25 goes out of that exchange. And also remember, too, Maryland only had four starters coming back from that 2020 season, and they were trying to rebuild the team to kind of get them ready. Jesus. That's another headshot. Yep, this is a very young team. Uh, the only pre-COVID players on this team are, uh, I believe, just Connor Angle. I think so. I think he's the last one. Yeah. So the team is young, but gaining experience. Not scared, which is crucial. Which is crucial, actually. I think Mel is going to be just fine. I know they have the travel restrictions, so that kind of prevents them from playing teams really outside the East Coast. They're really hoping that Penn State holds a tournament in the fall, and we get a couple of teams from Ohio, like Akron or Kent State, to come through. Since the drive for them is not really that far, good Lord. It's getting a As little chaotic. Jasmine now. and Nate go down there. Yeah, it's getting a little crazy now. So. Yeah, it looks like the focus is kind of slipping now that uh, both teams are kind of acknowledging the, the game's over. Pretty much. Just playing out the clock. Pretty much. But, uh, yeah, so that's what Maryland's kind of hoping for. I don't really know what JMU next move is. We'll find out in the near future. Or Towson, for that matter. I know Penn State is probably going to try to host the tournament or going to travel to Akron, either or. They're going to try to make that work. Jesus. And then Garrett just, unfortunately, and he stepped out. Yeah, Garrett just kind of hit some friendly fire. Ooh, Adam, the Adam is on a tear. He is racking up the kills right now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Ugh, that ball kind of just sailed on him. Oh, man. That is a ball's over against JMU. Yikes. Even... With them being up 4-0, to that's still kind of a mental lapse, and even they will acknowledge it. Maryland's got to hurry it up and get this started. They have just barely over a minute left. You might as well have some fun while you're at it. You ain't got much time, my guy. 
Yo, Schaefer is not really happy with Maryland right now. He's letting his feelings be known. He, he is not happy with them right now. All right, we are now under a minute. All right. All right, we'll see. I don't think Maryland will be able to take out all, is it eight of these uh, remaining JMU players in 39 seconds, but we'll see. They're certainly going to try. Oh, he gave somebody a headshot. They got two of them. Yeah, they did. They're playing up front now. Woo! Oh, Dixon missed. Oh, Dixon misses. He misses as well. No, Demons actually got the kill. Oh, sorry, I meant the JMU player missed. Yes, he did. He did miss. Woo! Demos being very aggressive. Another kill. Oh, two goes down. Rodriguez with a kill. Two Duke players go down for that exchange. Zessis almost catches a foot there. Three players left to beat for JMU. Just five seconds left. Oh, that's not going to work. Wow. And that's the game. And that's all she wrote. And that's all she wrote. And that's all she wrote. We're done. We're done. The point would not count. Stop. Stop playing. Stop playing. This point will not count. No matter what happens, this point will not count. Okay, we're done. Final score, 4-0 in favor of JMU. Pretty sure this is going to be um, our last game. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the traditional Maryland matchup, Towson versus Maryland. <laughs> Y'all funny. All right, let's go ahead and change things up a little bit, get ready for the last game, and then I can head on home so I can get some pie. Be right back. Girl, don't be complacent. You better take time. Uh -huh. You put me on your playlist. Girl, don't be complacent. You better take time.